Hello everyone, this is Professor Capco again, and today we're going to level up your ability to solve inequalities. Today we're going to use something called, we're going to solve something called a compound inequality, and then we're going to graph it. So all a compound inequality means is that there's more than one inequality expressed here. So this is an expression or an equation, and we have an inequality on this side, and we have one on the other side. So, and I've done some other videos on how to solve an inequality, so you may want to check that out. But just as a refresher, the way we're going to read it is remember that the mouth, think of it as a mouth of an alligator, the alligator always wants to eat the largest morsel. So if it's pointing this way, if it opens this way, then this side is the greater than and this side is the less than. If it has a line underneath, that also means it's also equal to. So this one over here does not have a line underneath, so it's just a pure inequality showing that this side is less than that side. So this side is less than this side, and it's also equal to. So to read this, we would read it negative 7 is less than or equal to 3x plus 2, which is less than 14. So we're going to solve this first, which when we talk about solving, we want to isolate our x. We want to get the x by itself. And there's more than one, one way to do this. My way that I like to do is to solve both outsides at once. So we're really going to solve the whole thing at once. In some books or some instructors might have you break it down and do it as two separate items. I just like to do them together. And if you do find these videos helpful, I would really appreciate it if you would hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. It really helps us grow and get this information out to others. So thank you for doing so. Let's go ahead and solve it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to isolate the x. We're going to look at any of the loose numbers, and that's this plus 2. I want to get this out of here. I want to get the x by itself. So since it's adding 2, I'm going to subtract 2. I'm doing the opposite of addition. If I do it to this side, I have to do it to all three sides. So I'm going to do it all the way across here like this. And I like to draw a line like that. So negative 7, and if I take away two more, this is going to make it more negative, right? You're on a number line, you're at negative 7. You're going to move 2 to the left. It's going to get even more negative. So think about it. If you're overdrawn at the bank by $7 and you spend two more dollars, you're going to owe even more money. You're going to be further in the hole. So negative 7 minus 2 more is negative 9. And I'm going to kind of skip to this side. If I've got 14 and I take away 2, I, that leaves me with 12. Then I'm going to look to the middle. I'm just going to bring down the 3x because we didn't do anything to that. So I just bring it straight down. And then 2 minus 2 is 0, right? That was the whole reason we chose to do that. So I don't really need to write the 0 here. But if you want to write it with a plus 0 just to remember it, that's fine, but we really want to get to the point where we don't do that. Now that we've done that part, we have to put in our signs in between again. Before I do so, I ask myself a very important question. Have I divided by or multiplied by a negative? Have I divided by or multiplied by a negative? In this case, no. All we've done is subtract. So the signs stay exactly like they are. What would happen if I had divided by or multiplied by a negative? Well, I would flip the signs. I would have to flip the signs. So don't forget to do that. All right, well, we're going to continue with solving. So I want to get this 3 out of here. The relationship between the 3 and the x is multiplication, right? There's a little multiplication symbol there that we don't bother to write. But it's right next to it, so we know it's multiplication. So we're going to do the opposite. What is the opposite of multiplication? Division. So I'm going to divide by 3. And if I do that to one side, I have to do it to all three sides, all three sides. So let's go ahead and do this one. I've got a negative 9 divided by 3. If I've got a negative divided by a positive, the signs are opposite. 
that means we're going to have a negative result. So a negative 9 divided by a positive 3. 3 goes into 9 three times. So our answer on this side is negative 3. Let's go all the way to this side here. If I've got a positive 12 divided by a positive 3, I know my result is going to be positive. And I don't necessarily have to write the positive sign there, but I'm doing it just to be extremely clear. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. Let's take care of the middle. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so I like to draw a big line through there, which looks like a 1, to remind me that I'm left with just an x. Always remember there is an invisible one here in front of the x, and that might become important in some cases. It really won't in this case. So I've got the x by itself. All I need to do is now bring down the signs. Before I do so, what's the question I ask myself? That's right. Did I divide by or multiply by a negative? In this case, I divided by a positive. The fact that I divided into a negative is no consequence. I divided by, in other words, what was on the bottom, a positive, so the signs stay the same. So you might have this as your answer, which could be read as negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 4. Sometimes you may need to break it up to show it as two separate um, items. And what I could do is if I do that, I just cover up one side and look at that first. So I've got x on this side and I got 3 on that side. So let's write it as x. And the mouth, the alligator, is eating the, the x, right? So I'm going to flip that around this side. So the x is still being eaten by the alligator. I remember that there's a, an equal sign here. And I'm going to put my negative 3 on this side over here. So I've kind of flipped things around, and that's why I flipped the sign. And the reason I'm doing that is because then I'm going to look at the other side, and I'm going to write my x again. And my x is not getting eaten this time, so it's got the small end of it. and the plus 4 is getting eaten. So you might write it as two separate items like that, or you might have it together, depending on how your instructor wants the answer written, or if it's on a test, how the answers are presented. So we have now solved it, but we haven't yet graphed it. We need to graph it. So we're going to graph this on a number line. So I'm going to show you my number line here and I'm going to rewrite what we have again we have negative 3 is less than or equal to x which is less than positive 4. So I'm just writing that again so I don't have to keep referring back to that page. So let's graph that. So this is x is the part that we're going to kind of draw the line. That's where the line is going to be on our number line and our number line the origin is here in the middle, 0, and it goes this way to negative 5 and on to infinity, and it goes this way to positive 5 and on to infinity, that direction. So we want to see how we do this. So first of all, we've, we've got a negative 3, so that's negative 1, 2, 3. So that's here. So I'm going to identify my negative 3, and this is our starting spot, right? We're going to go from negative 3, and which direction are we going? we're going to be, the negative 3 is the smallest part of it, right? Our x is larger than that, so that means our x is a larger number. So we're going to be going this direction, right? We're going to go that direction with our line. And we need to consider whether or not the negative 3 is included or not. Included. Well, in this case, it says it's less than or equal to, so that means it's included. Two different ways that this is presented. Sometimes this is presented as a, a solid dot, on the positive on the negative three might be presented as a negative as a positive excuse me as a solid dot or sometimes it's shown as a bracket depending on the book you're working with those both essentially mean the same thing how far does this line go well this line is going to go on until we get to positive four so here's our one two three four here's our positive four i'm going to go ahead and identify that and the line's going to go up to the positive 4, but is the positive 4 included? No, it is not, because the 4, the x is less than the 
the 4, so that means it's going this direction. The line's going this way from the 4, but the 4 is not included because there's no equal sign. So in some cases, that's shown as an open circle around the 4, and in other books and other cases, it's shown as a parenthesis like that. But in either case, our line goes all the way from that spot to the other. So I'm going to show the line like that. That, my friends, is how you solve and graph a compound inequality. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them in the comments below. And as I said, please give us a like and turn on the notification bell so you know when we release a new video. And there's some things down in the instructions or in the um, that you can do to support this channel. One of the most important things you can do to support this channel is to subscribe. So keep your grade alive and subscribe. Until next time, this is Professor Capco.